Are you having fun in your business? I mean, it should be fun, right? Well, sometimes the fun gets overlooked when you're dealing with the have-tos, the complexities of being your own boss and actually running the show. It's my goal that this, the Fun Business Fun Money Podcast, can help reignite your spark of fun by providing tips, tools, insights, and inspiration so you can enjoy running your business in the simplest, easiest, most fun way possible. I'll be sharing practical tips and ideas that you can implement immediately, along with business and money mindset insights to keep you moving forward no matter what's going on around you. I'm your host, Deirdre Amies, the fun business and money coach and founder of Powered by Personality. Let's play. Hey there, and welcome back to the Fun Business Fun Money podcast. Today, I've got a tactic for you in this hopefully short episode, but we'll just see how that goes. This is a tactic that's helped me and so many others that I've shared it with to create a new simple daily habit. We all love those, right? This is a quick fix for one of the biggest productivity blocks that I'm going to say most of the people on the planet with an email address or two have experienced. This is Also particularly relevant for you if you're a business owner who doesn't have time for boring admin stuff. I mean, boring, hello. That thing is managing your emails. I've got a simple five-step system that I'll share with you shortly that will take you less than five minutes a day. And that frees you up for all the exciting, interesting, money-making and creative things that you really want to be focusing on instead. But it also gives you peace of mind that you're managing your emails like a boss, because that's what you are. You're the boss. So if you're on social media, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, all of the places, at some point you will have noticed people sharing how many unread emails they have sitting in their inbox. It's like a badge of honor. And I can think of a couple of personality types that would absolutely hate dealing with that stuff and completely rebel against cleaning it up, regardless of whether it made their day, their business, their results a lot easier. So my background is that I spent 25 years working in various corporate admin roles. Most of my earliest jobs involved a lot of paper and one computer terminal for the entire office that was used for basic functions. Yes, it was the digital dark ages, which is kind of funny to think that it's really not that long ago. At least I don't think it is. We're talking the mid-90s. And then the internet and email became a more common thing in every office and home. And we started shifting everything into the digital world, which I love. It honestly made the work that I used to do so much easier because it meant I didn't have to retain so much knowledge in my head. I could simply search for it. So I have a simple process for managing emails, which developed from having to manage other people's emails as part of my job. I had full visibility on their inbox and I could send on their behalf. So there's a huge amount of trust involved at that level. I would oversee what was coming in and prioritize them, removing junk and spam and pointless stuff, so that my boss was maximizing their time and attention on the things that actually mattered. Now, everyone has different ways of managing their emails, and it would always take a bit of time to adapt to how a new person wanted things done. Sometimes it was easy especially if they were happy to take half an hour or so and show me what they wanted. Others would look at me like I had two heads or something when I suggested that they go over their preferences with me. They couldn't imagine anyone not doing it their way. So I think it depends on what you've been taught to do. And to be honest, most people have adopted a system created by someone else without thinking about whether it really suits you. 
So with emails, the standard seems to be that anything you want to keep, you create a subfolder and you file it much like you would with a piece of paper in a filing cabinet. Anything else, in theory, gets deleted. The reality is, a lot of people simply don't have the time or energy to implement or maintain that kind of system. You really do need an assistant to help you run it effectively. Because having to look at each email, decide its relevancy, and then drag it to a particular folder, that can be a lot. And even more so when it's a sub-subfolder, like a tab in a folder, a physical folder, to separate documents. So if this is how you do things and it works well for you, and you're keeping on top of it all, kudos to you. But I always wonder, how do you go about finding a filed email once you've put it somewhere? Because I can tell you, I've spent far too much time standing around waiting while someone's frantically clicking in and out of folders, muttering to themselves about various keywords. Who was it from? What was it about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So fast forward to now, and most people are still trying to follow that same system that really doesn't work for most of us, especially if you're in business for yourself. There is honestly no need to use a process that only applies to big corporate requirements. And in particular, I'm going to say a legal department of a big corporate. So what's the alternative? Simplify the process. This is something that works for every email provider that I've ever used. In my opinion, they're much the same. Let's get straight into it. Step one, in your inbox, select all, mark as read. Boom. Instantly, you have no unread emails. Depending on how many thousands of unread emails you have, it could take a few seconds or a few minutes. But the end result is that you no longer have the red notification thing on your phone distracting you and triggering those thoughts of, oh, I hate that. I really need to sort that out. I don't have time. I wish it would just go away. Ta da! It's gone. In a flash. Now, this doesn't delete anything, so don't go freaking out about it. That's not the point of it at all. And if you're using an email provider that has a limit on your storage capacity, you're probably going to want to delete some junk and free up some space. And we'll get to that in a minute. Step two is to unsubscribe. Just because you've cleared the illusion of thousands of unread emails doesn't mean they're going to stop coming in. Over time, you've subscribed to lists, you've signed up for freebies or discount codes. That junk piles up. And if you just carry on as you have, you're going to end up right back where you started. So step two is to unsubscribe from emails as they come in. You don't need to scroll back through endless pages of stuff. You can just handle them as they land in your inbox. And this is what will take you maybe five minutes a day. Unsubscribe, mark as junk, delete. So really, it should take you less than two minutes a day. So just get it done. And over time, you're going to see less and less garbage and more of the things that are actually relevant and that you enjoy getting in your emails. Step three is to declutter. So as I mentioned before, your email provider may have limits on your storage capacity, like Gmail gives you a standard 15 gigabytes across your email, your photos, drive, etc. And of course, you can pay for more storage, but you might also find some wiggle room by deleting some of those old emails. As you go through and unsubscribe from the newly landed junk, take a moment to sort those emails by that sender. It'll group everything together so that you've got it all in one group and you can do a mass deletion of that stuff from that sender. Boom, they're gone. Step four, make it a daily habit. It's all well and good to go through this and clean things up, but like I said, you've got to maintain it. This is one of the best daily habits that you can establish as a business owner. It honestly takes less than five minutes a day. Get in there. Check your emails on the regular, delete and unsubscribe from what you don't need, 
and keep the rest. And step five, use the search function. I'm sure you're thinking, how do I find an old email if I'm not filing them into folders? So easy and simple, use that search function. Typing in a keyword or a person's name is so much quicker than scrolling through, trying to find something, clicking in and out of folders, all of that stuff. So if the idea of leaving everything in your inbox gives you hives, (laughs) by all means, drop them into folders so that you can achieve inbox zero. Personally, I like knowing that anything I might need is easily accessible with that quick search. And I don't have to remember information based on categories or projects. This is just one simple, easy way to clean up your inbox and move forward with one less thing to distract you from achieving your goals. It's simple systems like this that are an absolute game changer for any business. It's all about making your life easier, knowing that you're not missing anything important amongst all the digital junk. So let me know if this is something that you're going to try, or have you now tried this now that you've heard of it? Maybe you have an even better way of managing your emails, in which case I need to hear about that. I love hearing that people are implementing simpler and easier ways to do essential tasks. So you can send me a DM on Facebook or Instagram. I'm at Fun Business Fun Money on both platforms. Or you can search for Deidre Amy's. I'm the only one out there with the spelling of my name. And you can also drop me an email at hello at deidreamies.com. So you'll find the link for that along with my not so easy to spell name in the show notes. And obviously, if you send me an email, I'm going to see it in a timely manner because I've got this simple, easy system in place. Nothing gets lost in my inbox. So that's it from me. Take care, have fun decluttering your emails, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me. If you found this episode useful, make sure you hit that follow button on your chosen podcast platform so you get the notifications when each new episode goes live and you don't miss anything. If you know someone who would also get something from it, don't be shy, share it with them. One of the best things about being a business coach for online entrepreneurs is helping them make sense of their creative ideas and turn them into a simple, clear business system that actually makes money. A client recently described me as a castle building expert. You've got the big vision and some of the building materials already, but you don't quite know how to bring it all together into a solid foundation. Then I come along and I show you the blueprint that makes sense of it all. I love that analogy. And I'd love to show you your personalized blueprint, the one that's just right for you and your clients. But I can't do that until you join Ignite, my business and money coaching program. So head on over to deirdreamies.com forward slash Ignite for all the details. Fill out the application form And let's talk about building your castle in the simplest, easiest way possible.